Uh, I live outside of Ithaca, New York in Tompkins County, Caroline, town of Caroline. We, my husband and I have a lovely place. We have 33 acres, we're out in the country, we love it. And the landsman came a couple times and at one point, you know, we basically said we're definitely not interested in uh, a lease of the surface rights. We might consider uh, a subsurface lease. And the landsman said, now nah, that's off the table. We said, fine, goodbye. And then he came back and said, well, I talked to the guys back at headquarters and we could probably do something, whatever. And the line was, uh, your neighbors have leased. New York State has something called compulsory integration. And that means that, I'll show you a map in a minute, that basically if 60% of a spacing unit, permit unit that's proposed by a gas company is leased, the other 40% of the land can be forced to give up their gas, they can be drilled under, et cetera. So the line is basically, your neighbors have leased, you're gonna be subject to compulsory integration, you might as well get some bonus for signing, and you might as well therefore sign up. And my husband and I thought in part, we use energy, natural gas is relatively clean, that's what we bought at that time, this was a bunch of years ago, and we shouldn't be NIMBY. We also um, basically sort of bought the line, it was gonna happen if it's gonna happen anyway. We therefore signed a subsurface lease for, I forget, maybe it was 500 bucks an acre, some money, not a huge amount, but not the $25 an acre people had signed for previously. We negotiated some stuff. We showed the lease to our lawyer. Um, I think our lawyer basically knew nothing about gas leasing and you know, raised one or two questions, but we signed on the dotted line. I'm an environmental scientist. Uh, I'm a geologist by background. And um, you would think that I would be cautionary. So there we were, we signed this and it was before shale gas was being, was on the table as it were. Um, we were out of the country for about six months, came back into the country and uh, the movie Split Estates was being screened in Ithaca and I went to see it. And when I came out, um, I was shaking. I, I just could not believe what I had seen and realized that I was just horrified by the fact that I had signed something. And what I realized was in my signing, I made part of that 60%. And I was endangering my neighbors as well as increasing the likelihood that drilling would take place. So one of the things that I think when people sign uh, or consider signing, they don't realize a lot of the implications. I know we didn't. Um, properties in Tompkins County are not selling if they have leases. People don't want to buy leased land. Now that's not true everywhere. Some places, speculators are coming in and buying up leased land if they can get the mineral rights because they're looking, they're thinking, hey, when we drill there, they're gonna get a lot of royalties. But in Tompkins County, um, I was talking to an organic farmer who's trying to buy a farm and said, I can't find any non-leased large tracts of land and I don't want those. And I'm finding uh, people who are trying to sell their property and can't. Can you get a mortgage? Uh, that's a moving target. Basically the mortgage, uh, the banks and the lenders are all over the map on this. They haven't really figured this out yet, but it's uh, a concern. How about liability? There's a problem on your property or your neighbor's kid comes and gets tangled up in your well in some way, shape, and form. What is your liability there? The reality is they're gonna sue everybody. You're gonna get sued, whether you uh, have a clause in your lease that indemnifies you, that could be useful. But can you get insurance? Is there um, uh, a clause that allows um, basically hazardous activities on your property? Um, something has come up that I, never occurred to me, 
but can you actually build something on your property if now the gas company has the right to access the minerals on your property? Can you build a house there, another house, and that has come up? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, how long will the lease persist? Most people, most of the leases that we're looking at have a five-year term, and then there's an automatic right to renew on the part of the gas companies for five years. But it also says that you'll be held by production. If they've started to, if they've spent money basically on that well, or maybe just as much as putting in a little access road, well, they've spent that money and your lease is held by production in that case, held open. So some of these may be basically in perpetuity. Right now, they call you on the phone, and it's just as devastating as when they came to your door. Colorado has been an extractive state almost as much as Wyoming has, maybe not quite so much, but it has always been an extractive state. When we bought our land in 1970, the gas leases uh, in our abstract were about that thick. They've been leasing since about 1940. But we were lucky enough when we bought our place to actually acquire a few mineral rights. Um, the, the custom was every time you sold, you halved what you had. So uh, the owner of the property from which we bought owned a quarter, so we got a half. Um, when the, ne when the um, and we are a split estate, uh, state, as you can imagine. Warned by the state officials, we were warned by the gas companies, we were warned by the neighbors, and we were warned by the lawyers that being forced pulled was a fate worse than death. And to be careful about the lawyers, there was only one person in our entire area who knew anything about gas or gas leasing, and guess who he worked for? So a lot of people were really built by this. We were just too mad, we didn't sign, and it has in grubby, greedy uh, kinds of terms been the best thing that's ever happened to us. They come in and hand you a lease. The lease reads BP's rights and responsibilities, your rights and responsibilities, and probably five out of ten of the little sentences is you waive your right to this, this, and this. If you don't sign it, they can bond on. I don't know if this is true in other states, but I suspect there is a similar mechanism. That means the state or the company posts an insurance bond uh, with the state. It comes out to be pennies or less per well. That is to ensure the state that if they come in and cause a big environmental problem because they didn't obey the rules, they can, the state can therefore pull up the insurance and pay for the, uh, the um, uh, damage. The landowner gets nothing for losing two and a half acres to three or four acres forever, and, and it has to put up with all of the impacts. So I think it's important for surface owners to know that, that they can refuse a horizontal well, and when the, and when the, um, when the, the driller comes out and says, we want you to sign a surface use agreement. If you read carefully or have a lawyer read it carefully, it'll say that, that you're, you're allowing this to happen and it couldn't happen before. So then along comes horizontal drilling. This, of course, is the vertical well. Um, and they come down and they frack and they drain this much. The horizontal well, they come down, they turn sideways, frack, 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 frack. One horizontal well replaces four vertical wells 
four vertical well pads, four access roads, four pipelines. If you're a surface owner, that's a good thing. on 40 acre spacing, each one of these blue squares would be a surface well pad, right? Every single one. But if they drill from six wells from a centralized pad, you get one centralized pad, just one, and then the horizontals go out and drain the gas and you've got one well pad instead of 24. So I want to talk a little bit about the regulatory landscape. Um, there are uh, federal regulators. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission regulates federally regulated pipelines. There are state regulated pipelines. Those are regulated typically by state utility commissions. Here in Pennsylvania, it's known as the Public Utility Commission. In New York, it's known as the Public Service Commission. And uh, the Jurisdiction that those, those state commissions have ver will vary state by state depending upon the legislative authority they have. So for example, here in uh, Pennsylvania, um, most of the gathering lines um, are not regulated by the, the Public Utility Commission. If the company wants to be a public utility, it can go to the Public Utility Commission and seek a certificate of public convenience and necessity. And if it gets the certificate, then it's a public utility and it's regulated. If they feel like they can just get the land they need, they can get the permits they need from the environmental agency, they don't particularly need, for example, the power of eminent domain, then they don't have to be a public utility, they don't have any regulation by the Public Utility Commission here in Pennsylvania. It's different in New York. You want to construct a pipeline, you go to the Public Service Commission. Um, unless you're a very small pipeline. There's, there's certain you know, fairly low pressure, fairly narrow diameter pipelines that are not within the jurisdiction of the PSC. But most of the things that we're you know, worried about and seeing are subject to the PSC uh, jurisdiction. Uh, participate in the regulatory proceedings. Um, in most cases, if you ask for them, you can get um, an opportunity for a public comment, you can get a public hearing, Go, make your view, views known. It can make a difference. Um, and there are also adjudicatory hearings. If they're applying for a certificate of some kind, um, there will be an administrative law judge that has been assigned. And you can, in, depending upon your jurisdiction, you might file a protest. You might seek active party status. You might intervene. But there is a way that you can formally participate, provided that you're somebody who's really going to be affected by this pipeline. And then finally, a word on eminent domain which is often what concerns people the most about, the, um, about pipelines and the certification process. The only pipeline companies that are entitled to exercise eminent domain are ones that do get the certificates of public convenience and need or environmental compa compatibility. And, and uh, uh, they have different names in every jurisdiction, but basically you have to get a utility commission certificate before you're going to be able to exercise eminent domain. Uh, it does not, you don't just get the right to do it as soon as you get the certificate. What you get is the right to go to court. So there's a separate court proceeding, an eminent domain proceeding. In both cases, if you're going to be actively opposing, you really need a lawyer. You need a lawyer that in, in the utility commissions that knows the utility commissions, and you need a lawyer in your eminent domain proceeding that knows eminent domain. Don't go to the guy who wrote your will, you know, <laughs> not a good idea. Um, and you should just be aware that if you are, if you are um, going through an eminent domain proceeding and they're very difficult to win and oppose, um, and they do get your land, you are likely to get a, a worse deal than if you negotiate an agreement. There's, they have huge pressure that way. But if you negotiate, you can think about um, some kinds of protections for your land, for example, are they going to use herbicides and to clear, to clear your, the brush off the land? Um, can you get them to, to agree to certain minimum depths? Can you get them to agree to um, move the pipeline? Sometimes they'll move it a little bit farther from your barn than they might otherwise be inclined to do. So there are a variety of different things that you can negotiate, and they want that opportunity. I mean, it's not quite like a well where you can kind of move it around a lot. 
You know, you actually have to connect all the pieces of a pipeline. And so, you know, that you do have some leverage there um, if you're interested in, in trying to negotiate. So, good luck. <laughs>